I'm Sadie Coles and I'm the owner of uh, Sadie Coles HQ which has been um, uh, open in London since uh, 1997 which is about 22 years. Um, I opened with a very small um, sort of white cube space in central London um, and I have since moved several times to different locations um, around the, the very centre of London. Um, I now have two galleries, one um, on Berkeley Square which is smaller and one very large space just off Regent Street. I went to university and did art history at university and after um, that I worked in the theatre and in the opera um, in the press departments and I got fed up with all the actors and the drama and so then I got a job in a museum um, and um, I then did an exhibition with an artist who was represented by a commercial, a very strong commercial gallery called Anthony Doffe, and he came to the opening and offered me a job. And I didn't realise the um, one-way street of going from a, a museum to a, a commercial gallery, um, in that it's quite difficult to revert to go back again. But um, once I had joined his gallery, I totally loved it because you have a very uh, different relationship with the artists you work with because it, it tends to be not just project based, it's a very long term exhibition. Plus Anthony, Anthony's gallery was very ambitious and he made really beautiful exhibitions and represented some of the best artists in the world at that time. So I got a chance to work with um, Jeff Koons, Gilbert and George, Elspeth Kelly, um, Kiki Smith, uh, lo lots of really, really great artists, and I learned a, an enormous amount. And I worked for Anthony for, for six years, and in the final year, I started to do projects with younger artists, um, including Sarah Lucas. Um, and I kind of that gave me a feeling that, that I, I wanted to, that it was time to leave, really. So then I left and I went to work for Jeff Koons in New York for a while, and then I came back and opened my own gallery in '97. And the first two shows, one was um, in a warehouse space uh, with Sarah uh, in April of 97 that was called um, The Law. And we found this empty warehouse and did, she did a big show in the warehouse. And at the same time, I opened my gallery on Heddon Street in London with, with a, uh, a show of paintings by John Curran. Um, both artists had said to me when I was in New York that if I didn't come back they would have to sign with someone else so I better hurry up and open my gallery, <laughs> which was very nice. That's why I started. Um, I think what motivates me is, is for sure um, the, the ideas that artists have, the, the fact that they're thinking way ahead of everyone else, in, in my view. Um, they're the most stimulating um, exciting people I know um, and it's an honor to be part of the the production around getting their work out into the world um, you know the dialogues you have in studios with artists about the direction their work is taking or um, what they where they want their work to be um, uh, their plans for their work, their, the ideas that they're developing, those are the best moments for me. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's really good. I don't know, really. That's interesting. I mean, I hope there's a, there's a has, that's just kind of happened. I mean, I just, you know, I find it very hard not to add to the program because I think it's very, very important for a gallery to uh, stay relevant. It, it, Often with galleries, you, you can see that they, they've got, there's a 10-year growth period when they, they start representing all the, the, the artists that they are known for, and then it stops, and then it becomes a bit frozen. So I'm very conscious of that. Um, so I'm constantly looking at new th projects, new things, um, uh, and I find it very irresistible sometimes when I see somebody's work and I just sort of fall a bit in love and then I want to add them to my program. Um, and then I will often introduce uh, the people I work with to each other and that makes a dialogue, a community, uh, you know. So I don't know, it's just like that. <laughs>
Yeah. It works in, there is no plan. There is no blueprint. There is no, you can't like generalize about this stuff. It's because also I have taken on artists at very different stages in their careers. Sometimes I take on someone who is, um, you know, leaving art school. Um, and sometimes I, I take on someone who's, uh, you know, in their in their mid forties, or sometimes I work with an estate. It's it really, um, it there is no blueprint. I just get a feeling that um, I'm looking at something that feels original, relevant, um, uh, an essential part of a dialogue now, or needs to be seen. Um, it's just, and and sometimes it's it's uh, that I've bought the work and I've sort of lived with it in my house for a, a bit and really have become very convinced that um, that it has something very original to add to the um, dialogue so it just it depends often it's an artist that I work with would rec recommend an artist that I should look at um, right from the start the reason it's called Sadie Cole's HQ is because HQ stands for headquarters and I wanted to have this idea that um, that there would be a central location but you know not a, an address in London but that we could do things in multiple venues whether it was in the city of London itself or um, in the early years of the gallery we did a regular program of gallery swaps with other colleagues um, and we still do condo, for instance, and um, we occasionally do, do pop-up uh, shows in various locations. I like this idea of rovingness. And the other thing is that right from the start, um, the gallery was, uh, the program was very, very international, um, rather than, uh, you know, when I opened, it was the key moment of YBA, uh, Young British Artists, and pretty much all of my, co my colleagues, the, the younger galleries in London, all had British programs and I, I had very, a very international program just because I'm interested in that. Um, well, I mean, to be honest, I'm really curious about like the world generally, um, which helps because I have to travel all the time. So I love going to new places and I really like uh, meeting new people. And China, of course, is is um, a totally fascinating, huge, huge place. Um, so we, we did uh, Hong Kong nine years ago for the first time. And um, as a child, I lived in the East um, because my dad was in the military. So for me, I'd, I always wanted to go and expect, see. Um, and once we had done uh, Hong Kong for the first time, it was very, very clear how much interest there was there for the first few years it was really tough you know it was tough to sell um, especially um, uh, some of the artists I have like Sarah Lucas I was told don't take Sarah Lucas because um, the, her materials and her subject matter will be very very tough in that market and she she isn't a, a blue chip um, artist um, or that's the perception um, but I did take her because that's such a key part of my program. And of course, people immediately started to learn about her work and because there's enormous curiosity. So eventually that started to, to work. Um, so it did take quite a few years to really establish connections with a few key collectors. Um, and since then, we have uh, made uh, visits to um, Beijing, Shanghai, to, to, to meet collectors, uh, plus to other places in the, in the region, which is vast. You know, there's Indonesia, there's Singapore, there's Taiwan, there's Japan, there's Korea, there's Australia. It's, it's, it's a really vast, vast region, um, all of which have uh, micro, uh, microcosms of, of very interesting um, uh, artists, galleries, and collectors, uh, and museums. So, so for me, it's it's a sort of endless, poss it's, there are endless possibilities to make new relationships. Um, we've since added um, Shanghai uh, to our art fair roster. We did a, a, an art, a, another art fair in another Chinese city. We did uh, Taiwan for the first time uh, last year. Um, 
so yes, it's a, it's a very significantly uh, growing market for us, that whole region. China itself, um, you know, is vast. Well, it's not that insane. It's one fifth of the world's population. Um, uh, and actually that region uh, itself is much more than that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very, very uh, large part of the world. And um, it's just really about, also about curiosity. People, are, people want to learn about what, the ga what my gallery is doing. Um, I also am very interested in what's going on there. I haven't, I haven't added a Chinese artist to my roster yet, um, but I'm constantly uh, doing research and looking. We did a show two years ago in the gallery of, um, of art from China during freeze because I wanted to do something that kind of went this way rather than that way. <laughs> um, and that was really fun and really uh, very, very interesting to present those artists uh, in London. Well, in, in some ways, they are driven by, by the expanded interest in art across the globe. And that's pretty much a result of the internet. Like 20 years ago, you know, people were not looking at art online through emails, through, there, there wasn't, you know, when I worked at Anthony Doffe, we had fax machines, there wasn't, uh, there weren't emails. So it's, it is actually things, ha the market has been driven um, by the functionality of the internet. Um, and that has expanded people's interest in art. It's expanded their ability to learn about art, to make connections with um, uh, artists or dealers that they're interested in. Um, and that has meant that that interest, that desire, ha uh, has encouraged art fairs to pop up all over the place. Um, you know, what's interesting uh, now uh, is that the art fairs are drivers of business. So even if you have this artwork in your gallery in a beautiful exhibition in London, um, it may be that the trigger to actually decide to buy it happens because people uh, have a sense of urgency around the opening of a fair. And so they, the collectors decide that that's when they do their deciding, their business, you know, their business, their, their acquisitions. So it's kind of interesting. It really does focus people's um, purchasing. And, you know, it may not always stay like that because in a way, um, the rise of the art fair has been a relatively new phenomenon. It's really been only the last seven years, if you think about it, seven or ten years. Um, and it may be that we're reaching a, an exhaustion moment. Um, but art fairs, you know, it's easy to, to feel that they are this sort of negative. Uh, personally, they are the place where, where you meet new people. Even a fair as established as Art Basel, which is the very top of the pyramid, really, in terms of quality, seriousness, um, uh, visit the, the, the quality of the collectors and, and institutions you visit, but you still meet new people. There is a democracy to an art fair. You know, it may be a bit um, tricky to think that you can walk into my gallery in London and just meet me. Um, first of all, you've got to get to London. Second of all, it seems, you know, if you're not used to galleries, they can be quite imposing for people. Whereas here, you buy a ticket and you know that you can come on, on, on the booth of any art dealer and, and just start a conversation about artwork. So in a way, there's a, a, um, a democracy, a democracy to, to uh, art fairs that is much more persuasive when you're doing an art fair in a, in a smaller environment, so say like Taipei or... Um, or uh, I don't know, Dusseldorf or somewhere. You know, it's it's actually it's it's interesting. I mean, personally, I like one of the great things about the art market is it's entirely organic, and um, things change all the time. Um, so, uh, and I welcome that change. So, if we're suddenly all, you know, if, if if it turns out that we're all doing business in Bitcoin in ten years' time, well, I'll, I will adapt to that new reality. Um, I do think things are changing in terms of representation for uh, the relationship between galleries and artists. Um, many galleries now have many galleries, in, many artists have many galleries, um, uh, whereas you know, a few years ago or 10 years ago, artists would have a maximum of 
two or three galleries and that's really changed. Um, but again, that's because of the spread of, of um, interest in art and, and the fact that most artists now are showing their, their uh, art in a, a much wider global platform. Um, so that's, that's, that's a new thing and I think that that trend will really continue. Um, you know, for the first time, there are artists who are represented by several galleries in one city. You know, that's a new phenomenon. Um, so, you know, but I'm up for, for all, all developments. We will see. The art fairs, the results of art fairs are very, very clear to galleries. They make decisions on whether or not to do that art fair again on, on one one showing up general, generally speaking so if you do well you do it again the next year and if you don't do well you don't do it again so so art fairs um, you know can can uh, fold very very quickly so so we'll see uh, it's a very competitive business you know we're all trying to <laughs> to 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 be the to be the to make the sales for our artists you know so that's um, you know, in order to retain your artists, you need to to continue to represent them in a really good way and make sales for them. So it is a very, very competitive business, especially at the top. You know, it gets it gets tougher and tougher and tougher at the top. But I would say, really, um, you know, I mean. It, the, the, the colleagues I work with, the colleagues that I spend the most time with, they all have the, a, a similar standard as, as me and they are, you know, there's a code of conduct that you have with your colleagues that we all try and follow and, you know, you just have to be nice. <laughs> um, everybody, um, we're all working as one team, whether, whether you're the art handler or the registrar, or, um, or the press person, or the salespeople. It's all one team. Um, because I, I just, it's just better in the long run. I mean, I mean, I don't, I would say that's interesting actually because although there's less and less public money, I'm not sure that there's more and more private money because Brexit and also there isn't a culture of, of giving in, in the same in the UK in, as there is in America because people don't get tax breaks for giving, so they don't give in the same way. Um, so I think it's actually a really big problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the gallery is asked all the time to support um, museum shows um, often uncredited because the museum doesn't want to look like the museum that the, 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 they are taking money from from uh, the, the galleries of the artists they're showing. But actually, I, I personally, I think it's a bit disingenuous because they are <laughs> the prizes. Oh, I don't really like prizes. I think it's um, bullshit, personally. Uh, but but. Um, I understand why institutions do them because they're a focus and they're a publicity thing. Um, but personally, I think I prefer, like I really like the Tate Triennial that they used to do, but I don't know if they're still doing it, um, where you have a survey exhibition of really what's going on in, in art now. Kind of, I, like, I like those sorts of things and that, I always like biennials for that same reason. Um, you know, they. You have a curatorial view that has, has um, you know, presents the zeitgeist, and I always think those are really useful. I don't like the idea of making a horse race of artists against each other. I would rather just have a survey show. Um, but I understand why it's important for the institution because it's an enormous press focus thing. And I think, like pretty much everyone else in the UK, um, I. Uh, the sense of uncertainty and um, uh, the question about what will or won't happen is making it very, very difficult to um, to plan, actually. Uh, um, and so there's a great deal of anxiety and stress in the art market in London because none of us really know what's going to happen in terms of how it's going to affect uh, the customs, the tax, um, 
uh, the number of people who live in London who might leave or are already leaving. There's a huge amount of anxiety around that. Plus, it's also already affecting the number of European students who are choosing not to apply to British art schools, so that's serious. Many of my staff are, are non um, British passport holders, so that's it's also going to affect that. So it's not it's very very worrying. But London itself is a place of of course that um, voted to to remain in the EU. I'm passionately for um, staying in the European Union. So there's also a part of me that hopes it, that there's going to be a fluke and it won't happen. But um, ah, I don't know what to say. I think my feelings have changed enormously when I was when I'd opened my gallery. Um, I was very adamant that I um, wouldn't reflect on that really. That I was uh, that I was a uh, um, just as good as my male colleagues, and therefore I did not want to have a discussion about what it was to be a female dealer. I wanted to be included in the discussion about being a dealer. I didn't want to be in a ghetto of any sort. Um, as I as I reach my mid as I, in my middle fifties, I think I um, feel slightly different about it. You know, it's not been easy to have children and to try and um, juggle the intense travel schedule around raising uh, a child. Um, plus, I do feel at the end of the day, the world is sexist, and there's uh, women are treated differently. Um, uh, and I resent it. I actually resent it. I mean, who put men in charge? I just so in some ways I feel more militant today than I did when I was younger. I mean, you know, I have very close relationships with the people I work with. Um, I'm honest. I'm very honest. So if I uh, often I, I will give an opinion. Um, if I'm asked, I will give an opinion about. Um, um, strategy or about um, the direction that the art is is going in or ideas or whatever um, I will tell I will give an honest opinion and I think artists really appreciate that um, I can often be proved wrong my opinion can be proved wrong and I'm happy with that as well um, but I pay the artists as, as soon as, as fast as I can. I, you know, and I, I, I'm pretty sure they all appreciate how hard um, I work. Um, yeah, I don't know really. I, I'm just, I feel very blessed that I just work with really, really great people. I work with really great staff. Most of my staff have been working with me for a very long time. We don't have a quick turnover of people, um, and I think that helps. Um, and the artists like that too. It's a lot of work. It's 23, no, 25 days a year of meetings, which is, you know, that's a month. That's a lot of work. Um, but it's honestly, and, and also when you start, you're committed to do maybe eight years. So it's not like you can just do one year and then drop out. Um, but it's the greatest honor because um, uh, you really deep dive into um, an examination of the contemporary art market now and contemporary and modern and um, you look at so much work you look at so many galleries from really young galleries to really really much older established much bigger galleries um, you try to uh, strategize and examine trends in where the art market's going for instance how to support younger galleries that was a big discussion last year about the fee structure in uh, Basel um, and you try and protect the whole market really um, and it's very collaborative you know I speak to my fellow dealers all the time about their problems their issues their complaints there you know it's actually it's super interesting actually and um, I uh, I try very 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 hard to avoid selling to speculators of course that is not foolproof because um, sometimes people pre people present themselves um, uh, it's it's very hard and it's that's a really really big problem um, and it's it, it's extremely exasperating if you've if you've sold something to someone and suddenly it's flipped 
It's, it's, uh, that's like the worst. It's heartbreaking. That's on our invoice, but it's actually, it's very, very hard to make that legally binding. So in a way, that's a, that's, you're asking someone to extend you the courtesy of letting you know if they wish to sell the work and allowing you to deal with it. Um, but in a way, that's a, a, that's a, there are plenty of people who ignore it. No, it's very difficult. Um, it's a bit like water divining. You need to have a sense of where the right price is. Like, um, you know, in terms of comparables with, with other artists of the same kind of generation or the same kind of exposure. Um, you know, you have to consider how much institutional um, presence an artist has had, what collections they're already in, um, or not. Um, but you, it's really like it's a, it's really like a casting a spell. You really have to have a kind of magic sense of where the right place is, and um, and then be confident about it. I mean, I think it's very, very difficult. This is a minefield because um, it's very, very hard to know how people made their money or whether it's clean, if you see what I mean. I mean, it's, it's extremely difficult. Um, and if, if I went through all the sales that I've made in the last three days, you know, do I know where everybody's um, made their money and whether they've, their, their practice is ethical? And, you know, it's, it's really tough. But you could say that about any business. That's, you know, I don't think that's, it's not just, it's everywhere. But it's a discussion that is ongoing and is very, um, uh, you know, I talk to my artists about it all the time, but it's a discussion that's also going on in fashion, for instance, like what's sustainability and what is ethical. And, you know, I think it's actually very, uh, I do have politics, of course. I have personal, uh, viewpoint on all of it <laughs> but I don't dictate to anyone else I will do what I believe to be the right thing and, and that's um, well I mean to be honest everybody that I you would say is blue chip in my program didn't start that way so in a way we've all we've had that journey together you know you know Rudy Stingle when I first um, showed him um, it was not uh, uh, a regular um, uh, evening sale Christie's artist. Um, so, in fact, it was quite hard to sell his first show. So, you know, I, the, the journey that we've, uh, as Fisher um, was, was very, very young when I first started working with him. So, so we, I have been on a, we've been on a journey together over a long, long period. Um, of course, it becomes more competitive and harder to retain the, the, the artist as they become more and more successful because, um, you know, suddenly they're represented by much, much bigger galleries and um, uh, the competition for um, their work between the representing galleries becomes tougher and tougher and tougher. And, you know, Gagosian have 13 or 14 galleries around the world, so they are offering uh, exhibition possibilities to the, art, the, the artists all the time. I only have one location in London. I mean, I have two, two galleries in London, but I have one city. Um, so, you know, it's, it's tough. Um, but I rely on the strength of my relationship with the artist. Um, and hopefully I am providing a useful uh, function in their life, you know, uh, you know that they like a dialogue with me, and I'm selling to good places. Um, I try to to place the work really well so it doesn't come back at auction, um, you know. And I just have to keep my fingers crossed. Um, no, I, I because I really feel uh, my model is not is not um, David Werner or, or Larry, you know, or Hauser and Ver I don't want to have multiple locations. Um, I'm more interested in having a lot of locations in one city. And that's partly because I just feel my business is super personal and I'm a total control freak. So I like, um, I like being involved. I really like, I don't want to have a satellite that I'm not quite sure about what's happening. Plus I want to have a, a reasonable um, life.
<laughs> it's hard enough as it is.